welcome to another get to know our yarns video here on the Making Stories channel. I'm Hannah Lisa, the owner and CEO of Making Stories, and I'm super, super happy that you're joining me today. Grab your whip, grab your cup of tea, which I probably have done because I apparently sound like I've just drank a lot of whiskey, which I have not, I assure you. Um, <clears throat> just getting over a tiny bit of a cold. I am here today to talk about one extremely exciting addition to our yarn lineup. It's a yarn that I've been in love with ever since um, I heard about it. And that love affair just deepened the minute that I actually laid my hands um, or, or had like a couple of skeins of it in my hands. Um, it is also a very exciting addition to our lineup because we're the first ever European stockist of this particular yarn and this yarn company, which makes me incredibly proud and happy and thankful that they are trusting us enough to, to be that. Um, it is 100,000% in line with our values and the people who run this yarn company are absolutely amazing and lovely folks. Now, after all of that wonderful introduction, I'm just going to hold up two skeins and let you see for yourself. We are the very proud first European stockists of Hudson and West and their two yarn bases, Forage and Weld. Before we talk about these beautiful yarns, I want to talk a little bit about Hudson and West and why we decided to stock them. I know that if you are a US-based viewer or a customer, you might have heard of them. Um, but if you're in Europe, you might not have. And um, that's what we're here for. That's also what this video is about, to talk about um, who those people are, what they do, why their yarns are absolutely, absolutely amazing. And I want to start off this intro video with a quote from their website. They write, we create yarns that support the ready to wear inspired garments and accessories that form the core of the modern knitter's wardrobe. Yes, this is what we aim to do here at Making Stories as well. We want to help all of you, the wonderful knitters in our lives, to create garments and accessories that you will love and cherish and wear for years and years and years to come. The core of the modern knitter's wardrobe. It goes on like this. And we source and produce our yarns in the US using a traceable, sustainable and fair supply chain. Hell yes. Yes. This is the type of transparency and information that I cherish so, so much. Um, and I really, really appreciate how Hudson and West do talk about their journey and their yarns and how they're made and where they're made on their website. So if you are super curious, head over to HudsonandWest.com because they have an amazing range of information just on their website. And I think it always just speaks to, to and like for a company really, if you put all of that information out there. Hudson and West was founded in 2019 by Megan Barbin, who you might know because she used to be the editor of Interweave Knits, and Sloane Rosenthal, who used to be a lawyer and then became a wonderful knitwear designer. And there is a lovely sort of legend around the origin of Hudson and West, because apparently it started off on a napkin at Rhinebeck. And now here we are a few years later with these amazing yarns. Isn't that cool? I love it. And I also love how Megan and Sloan describe their yarns and themselves. They say about themselves, we're both obsessed with ruggedly handsome yarns. Yes. Practical design and thoughtful, well-made goods. Um, I love that description of the yarns that they love because it also applies perfectly to both Weld and Forge. There are two yarn bases. Ruggedly handsome yarns. 
It's really, really, really nice. So, as I said, <laughs> they produce two different bases and both of which, uh, both of which we carry. They're called Weld, which is their fingering, ba fingering weight base, and Forge, the worsted weight base. Both of them are made up in almost the exact same way. So instead of going and like rehashing the story of each of these bases um, twice, I'm first going to be talking about how they're made and where they're made. And then we'll talk a little bit about, um, about these beauties. And also I have a full desk of colorways that I want to share with you, so be prepared. Both yarns are a Corydale Merino blend, 70% Merino, um, both white and gray, and 30% Corydale. And these, the fibers that are used in these yarns, they were completely grown and sourced in the US, and the entire yarn is completely made in the US as well. So scouring, spinning, dyeing, everything's everything's made in the US, um, which I really appreciate because A, it helps with the transparency and traceability of the yarns, but also B, yes, the US is a big country, but it still cuts down on transport costs and transport emissions if you try to keep it at least within one country, if not ship it halfway across the world uh, in order to, to get something spun. Um, so, the blend of Corydale and Merino is just a super, super, super nice one because it is soft, but also has a little bit of a tooth and an incredible level of bounce. Just look at this, super, super nice. Um, and this yarn is really like, it is so, so, so good. Sorry, I got a little distracted. I actually wanted to talk about where it's made and how it's made. And then it so was like, ooh, it's, really nice, which it is. So um, we were talking about Corydale and Merino and where they're sourced from. So for the Merino, because Merino is a short staple fiber, which means it needs some special processing equipment. Um, they are, um, as far as I know, still buying combed tops. So it's 100% uh, US Merino that is grown in the mountains of Colorado and New Mexico. And um, then they buy the, so comb tops are the fluffy bits, you know, almost the things that you, that you use for spinning, just like very fluffy. Um, and the Corydale actually comes from the Hudson Valley uh, in New York, which is super fun because that's also, um, uh, you know, part of, part of their, part of their name, Hudson and West. The um, yarn itself is spun at Mount Meadow Wool in Buffalo in Wyoming and is then transported over to North Carolina where the lighter gray yarn, this beauty here, is then dyed up by Ultimate Textile and they sit in Rutherford, and, as I said, in North Carolina. Um, what I found really fascinating when I read up on their dyeing process is, I mean, you all know that I love when you dye on like a natural base that's like beige or gray because it gives the fibers and the colorways so much depth. What I did not know was that the Corydale and Merino fibers also take the dye slightly differently. So that also adds to the depth, which I found absolutely fascinating. I mean, it makes total sense. I just had no idea about this before. The way that this is spun, it is called semi-worsted. So you might be familiar with woolen spun yarns, which are the really bouncy airy ones and worsted spun yarns, which are the very sort of, very, I was gonna say very slick ones, that sounds weird. Um, but the ones that are like um, quite round and um, this is a combination of, of, of those two spinning methods. And what you do with semi-worsted spun yarns is you comb the fibers so that they are somewhat more organized than in a woolen spun yarn where you don't comb them, um, but not as much 
as for a worsted spun yarn where you would comb them so that they all lie flat in one direction. So you comb them a little bit, you give them a little bit more organization, so to say, um, and then you spin them. And that creates this incredible like bounciness and airiness that you might know from wool and spun yarns, but also the really good stitch definition that you might know from worsted spun yarns. So it is really, is a really, really good um, spinning method. As I said, <clears throat> the two bases um, are a fingering and a worsted weight base. The fingering one is the first one that I'm going to be talking about. It is called Welt. Um, I should say, I always forget to say that because it's so obvious to me, non-superwash all the way. Non-superwash, no nylon, no plastic, no anything. Like with all our yarns. That's why I keep forgetting to talk about it. So, Welt. Fingering weight, 70% merino, 30% Corydale, completely sourced, spun, dyed in the US. This yarn is a beautiful three ply yarn. So it's made up of, let me try and show that to you. I don't even know if that is going up. No, that is not going to work. So if you untwist the yarn slightly, you can see that it's made up of three strands, three in individual strands of yarn that are then twisted together to achieve the fingering weight. And um, three ply yarns are generally really round, like they're round balanced yarns. Um, Weld has, um, I would say like a semi high twist, it has a higher twist than Forge, the older sibling, um, but it's not like super tightly, super tightly twisted. Like you might know it from some of the natural sock yarns that we carry. The fingering way um, comes in at 183 meters per 50 grams. So that's about 200 yards per 1.76 ounces. Um, so almost like a classic fingering weight yarn. You can knit this up at a lot of different gauges. Like this is like, European yarn that I would compare this to is probably Euless from Dero Natura, which you can also knit up on a lot of different needle sizes and a lot of different gauges. And this is the same. So you can knit this up on a true fingering weight gauge, but you can also up go to like treat it as a sport weight or even higher. The suggested needle size for this is 3.25 to 4 millimeters, which is US 3 to 6. And by that range, you can already see that you know, you can achieve a lot of different gauges with this and it's still going to look good. And because of that, I think it's also extremely sort of variable in terms of what you can make with it. Like this looks stunning in stock a bit, but it would also look absolutely beautiful in any sort of textured garment or accessory. You can do amazingly beautiful lace with it and it even works for color work. So it's just a really good all-rounder yarn. So this is going to be one of our evergreen yarns. You know, we do some yarns, especially around the release of our magazine, that then disappear after a little while. Uh, but this one is always going to be going to be with us because it's so good. And I'm also just really excited to expand our portfolio to some of the lesser known US-based sustainable yarns like Hudson and West. So this is Weld. And then we also have Forge. Yay! So that is basically the bigger sibling of Weld. It's a worsted weight, same makeup, 70% merino, 30% Corydale, sourced, spun, dyed in the US. Um, also semi worsted spun. Also three ply, which means it has this incredible roundness to it. Just look at it. Just super, super round. Very, very good. Um, it comes in at 250 meters per 100 grams. So well, it comes in 50 gram skeins, forage in 100 gram skeins. Uh, 250 meters per 100 grams are approximately 235 yards per 3.5 ounces. 
And the suggested needle size for this is three is four to five millimeter, which is a US six to eight. Um, and this is absolutely a cable rock star. Cables in this, oh my god. I don't know if you've seen some of the Hudson and West patterns, but they're so so good. I'm gonna talk about patterns in a second. First, I want to talk about the colorways. So Super, super nice. We carry the entire color range of Hudson and West in both colorways, uh, in both bases, sorry. Um, and what I'm going to do is, um, instead of showing every everything twice, I'm just going to show you the two, di the two different bases in the different colorways. Starting with the four undyed bases that range from a natural creamy white to a dark charcoal. This is Aspen, a beautiful, completely undyed cream colorway. Amazing if you want to do color work. Absolutely stunning. Followed by Fawn, which is the one that I've been showing you before. A really stunning heathered beige, slightly on the cooler side. I'm usually not a beige person. I would like to wear this. Then we have a light to medium gray that's called Ash. This is a cold gray, so gray leaning to blue. And the aforementioned charcoal, which is a beautiful heathered charcoal gray. Like seriously, like this is so good. Like this has so much depth to it. So if you wanted the, a dark sweater, but not like go true, true black, this is an excellent choice, charcoal. All right, we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve dyed colorways. And we are going to start with one where I obviously completely forgot to take the forge one. No, I did not. There you are. So, this is mustard. So, it is slightly warmer on, um, on weld than it is on forge, uh, but it's a beautiful um heathered yellow really really stunning i love that so much it's like a ray of sunshine and then golden leaf which is this beautiful yellowish green almost olive again like a slight color variation that is it on weld, Ooh. and that is it on forage. I actually have to ask the Hudson and West folks why it is that the dye, the yarns take up the dye differently, because um, they are the same makeup. I think maybe it is because the Corydale and the Merino take the dye differently, and because they're obviously spun a little bit differently because it's not the same yarn then maybe that's why. Um, yeah, but it. golden leaf. Really, really like that one. All right, continuing our green journey, we have two more greens. Juniper, a really beautiful, like, just very true, um, almost like bluish, bluish green. And then we also have evergreen, which is slightly darker than juniper. So that you can see the difference. So this is juniper and this is evergreen. So juniper is slightly lighter than the evergreen, which is a bit more sort of towards the teal. Here they are both on weld 
So this is Juniper and this is, um, this is Evergreen. Moving on to pinks and purples. Dusk, which is the most perfect pink of all times. And it's just really, really good. So slightly more pinkish on Weld. On Forage it is like a grayish pink. And I adore this. So I'm going to cast something on with myself in this. For myself with this. If you have been following us for a little while, you will know that I am absolutely not the biggest purple fan. I also completely forgot apparently that colorway on Forge to bring it. That's weird. Okay, so I'm just gonna show it on Weld. This is Cabernet and it's a really good purple. Purple leaning very much towards blue. A cool like a cool purple so this is very it's, it's absolutely beautiful and then from purples we'll move on into reds starting with barn red on both faces so this is a really beautiful dark red colorway on welds and also on Forge. It's an absolutely stunning. And if you'd like dark reds, this is for you. It's very good. We also have Tobacco, which is um, a reddish brown, brownish red, almost even a little bit burnt orange. I never thought like a colorway called tobacco could look this good, honestly. This is it on Weld. And this is it on Forage. Super, super beautiful. Tobacco is quite close to Red Feather. I'll show you both next to each other in a second. But Red Feather is slightly darker and a bit more vibrant. And this is, if you like the rusty reds, this is for you. Like, just look at this. So let's compare those two. So this is tobacco and this here is red feather. If you want to see all three. And this is barn red. So you can see they are different. Okay, three more to go. <laughs> it was so funny when we first got the yarns. Um, Elsa uh, went through the went through the box first before I did, and she's like, "There's such a great light blue," and I was like, "Ooh, I'm very excited." So this is Lake, the denim blue of every denim lover lover streams like mine. So Lake on Weld. And Lake on Forge. Again, on the colder side. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. One colorway that I was really excited about because it's quite difficult to get a really good dark blue was Midnight. And oh my God, like if you are into dark blues, you absolutely want to get this. So dark, like very, very, Midnight is the perfect name for this. Like it's an inky dark blue on Weld. And here it is on Forge. And then the last one that rounds up the, uh, the color selection is a black, a black black called Raven. So this is just a good, true, solid black. Again, great for color work or also just for that you know, super wearable black sweater. Um, let me show you Midnight and Raven next to each other. So you can see this is Midnight and this is Raven. But they are 
different. Midnight and Raven. I am so incredibly excited that we now carry this yarn because like both bases are beautiful. Sloan and Megan and also Jocelyn who does their fulfillment. Absolutely amazing people, so incredibly helpful and their yarns are just truly, really, really, really good. I can't wait for you to get them. Like they're just so good. Now, yarns are great. Patterns for those yarns are even better. So I am also super happy to announce that we now carry the best selling patterns from Hudson and West, all of which are designed explicitly for their yarns um, in our web shop. So it's all digital patterns um, that, you can, that you can get, including their brand new fall collection. So if you are a cable lover, a texture lover, I would highly recommend you check them out because they do design some of the things themselves, Sloan and Megan, but they also work with fabulous designers such as Emily Green. Emily actually redid um, or, or developed an update to her citrine sweater from Jewels that has a different construction. So it's now top down instead of bottom up. And she did that for Weld. And that is also available. So if you've been eyeing that sweater that I just wear to death all of the time, check it out. If you have any questions about Hudson Out West, about Weld, about Forage, about the patterns, just comment down in the question box below. Send us an email. We're here to help. And yeah, the yarns um, will be uh, available on see now i'm completely blanking on our launch date um the yarns will be available on october 10th yay which is if you're watching this kind of like in real time um just five days away four days away so yeah <laughs> see this is like the video went so well and I was talking about to think about the launch and I completely blanked. So October 10th, from that day onwards, you will get all of the beautiful yarns that I've just talked about, including um, and, and also all of the beautiful Hudson and West patterns. I'm so excited about them and I hope you love them as much as we do. See you soon. Bye.